Hello friends, welcome to Lug Life. You guys, welcome back to the next In the Kitchen cooking episode with myself and Auburn. Auburn, say hi. Hi, Auburn. Good job, very good job. Um, you guys, this video we're making today, this recipe, I, I told Auburn this earlier, this is the one that I'm the most, most, most looking forward to. Auburn, what are we making today? Chicken and dumplings. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait for chicken and dumplings. <laughs> So the reason I'm so excited about this recipe is chicken and dumplings is something that my mom used to make growing up. It was one of those meals that I remember absolutely loving when she made, and I have never made it. I've never made it because I've always been intimidated by chicken and dumplings, um, primarily like the dumpling part. It just feels, I don't know, it feels intimidating. So Auburn found a recipe online that you guys had had before, right? Yes. Yeah? And we are going to make it, and I'm super, super excited. That's what happened tonight. It's kind of chilly here in Anchorage. It is like 40 some degrees, so it's perfect chicken and dumplings weather. So let's start this video out, and I will show you what we need for this recipe. So there's actually not a ton of stuff here uh, that we need. We are gonna do this in our cast iron Dutch oven. We have a measuring cup, full confession. Um, Auburn dusted off the top of this with her shirt because it was like super dusty and she was like, I don't want people to yell at you. So I'm gonna dust this. So thanks Auburn, <laughs> always looking out for me. Uh, we have eggs, we have half and half, we whole milk, chicken stock, a bay leaf, salt, parsley, a bag of like frozen mixed vegetables, fresh thyme, uh, flour, baking powder, thank you, and one rotisserie chicken, and then we have like a medium sized mixing bowl as well. So this is all that we're gonna need to make chicken and dumplings. Auburn, Yeah. what is step number one? Step number one is to put this on the stove with chicken stock. Got it. Dutch oven is on the stove. Uh, how much chicken stock are we using? We need five cups. Now there is something coming up later in this recipe that I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit concerned about. Um, one thing that Auburn has quickly learned about me in the kitchen is that I struggle with leaving stuff alone. I always wanna like move stuff and touch stuff and like just tinker and mess with stuff. Apparently though, when we're making like the dumplings and the chicken, you have to leave the lid on. Like I can't be opening the lid and checking on it. So. Auburn has threatened to like physically harm me. No, I threatened to lock you out of the house. That's what it was. She threatened, sorry, she threatened to lock me out of the house in winter in Alaska um, if I remove the lid. So fingers crossed, I'm gonna be able to behave myself. What do we got next? We need a cup of half and half. Okay. Next, we are sifting one and a half cups of flour. And if you don't have one of those like hand sifters, you can use like a sieve like this. And it's perfect. Tell me the per the point of sifting rather than just putting a cup and a half of flour in the bowl. Keeps it from getting lumpy. Oh, there you go. Maybe I should have sifted myself. I've gotten pretty lumpy over the years as well. <laughs> and what's next? Two teaspoons of baking powder. Just right into just the- Just right into the flour. Okay. And we're also gonna sift some salt into here too. Okay. In goes the salt and sifted. Yep. Now I'm going to dump in one cup of, is this the milk or is this the half and half? The half and half. The half and half into the chicken stock. So in here I've got a half a cup of milk, whole milk, and then we're gonna add two eggs in here. We're gonna whisk this together. What you doing now? Now I've got a quarter cup of water with two tablespoons of flour because we're gonna make a slurry. A slurry. A slurry. It's I gonna don't... thicken up our sauce, which is in the stock pot right now. I don't think I've ever made a slurry before. Usually they use cornstarch. Um, this one uses flour. Okay. Which is fine. And then you just bloop. In goes the slurry. In goes the slurry. All right, so now we're gonna add our eggs and milk to our flour mixture, and this is gonna become our dumplings. Mmm. And then you wanna mix this in, but not over mix. You just wanna mix it till all the flour is wet. You're not like super aggressively whisking this. No, as Julia Childs would say, around the outside and down through the middle. Around the outside and down through the middle, or as Auburn Human would say, stir, 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 stir. So as far as consistency with what you're looking for, like obviously you're not looking for something smooth, right? Like these no. are these are dumplings. Yeah, that's gonna be sticky. Okay. And we're gonna leave it alone for a couple of minutes because now we need to add vegetables to our stock. Oh. And we also need to shred our chicken. <gasps> You guys, shredding the rotisserie chicken has been the part that I'm the most excited about. And you can get to work on that right now. Yes. 
So before I start shredding the chicken, Auburn has the bag of frozen vegetables, and this was just like the mixed vegetables this at the one grocery has store. Carrots, corn, cut green beans, and green peas. And those are just getting dumped into uh, into our mix here. Yep, and I've been adding everything pretty slow because otherwise it's never going to get hot. Got the vegetables it. are frozen. Oh. The, the half and half is cold, and the chicken stock was cold. So we want to add things and keep it hot. Very smart. So now Auburn's putting in a couple of bay leaves. And then we have some, oh, so you're just putting in like whole sprigs of thyme. Yeah, you're not going to eat this, but you're oh. going to pull it out later. So Adam is shredding the chicken, like sort of with scissors. It's, it's hot. Yeah. So that's why I'm using It is scissors. really hot. I can see the steam coming off of it. The recipe calls for two cups of chicken. I'm having him do a little bit more than two cups of chicken just because there's going to be three of us for dinner. And, you know, I don't kind of, I kind of don't feel like you can have too much chicken in a chicken and dumplings recipe. I agree. The worst thing that can happen is we have leftovers. Oh darn. Oh no. Oh no. So we have a whole bunch of chicken done now. And is this ready to go in there? Yes it is. Here we go. In goes all of the chicken. Oh my gosh. So now all of the ingredients are in here for like the soup part, right? Yes. Now the chicken we are, is done. Now we're getting ready to do the dumplings. This is the part that has always like intimidated me the most. So how big are we looking for as far as size goes? Um, a tablespoon or two because they're going to really puff up. We put a ton of baking powder in here. Okay. So when we put the lid on and start steaming them, they're going to really puff up. Okay. And you're not looking like you're not going for like perfect little balls or anything like that, right? No. You could use an ice cream scoop if you really wanted to. I'm just going to go by like wad size okay is that the official scientific this is what i'm calling it it's, it's a wad, wad. Got it's it. a wad of like a dumpling dough a wad of dumplings and then you just yep, right in there like that and so we're just gonna put all of the dough in there right yes okay and then we're gonna simmer it for about 10 minutes with the lid off okay and then we will put the lid on and simmer it for 20 minutes and that's when i'm not allowed to that's mess when with you're it. not allowed to mess with it okay now does it matter that some of them are bigger some of them are smaller do you want them all about equal size or at this point it doesn't really matter because they're all going to cook um it's best to keep them all about the same size because they'll cook at the same speed oh does that make sense totally makes sense you've got a really big one right next to a really little one um the big one is going to cook slower got it and is it okay if they touch a little bit or will they become like one giant dumpling if they touch? I have no idea. We'll see. We might be lucky and maybe they'll be individual dumplings or maybe they'll all stick together. I have no idea. I'm not going to be mad if it's one giant dumpling. I'm going to be totally honest. Dibs on that one though. Last dumpling going in the pot. Just trying to find this little, right where's this guy going to live? Right over here. Oh, amazing. Also, you guys, look who is home from work. Hello, Sherry. Hello. You have really good timing on like getting home as we're in the middle of a recipe, so you get to just enjoy the food. Yes. Um, let's talk chicken and dumplings. Yeah. I said earlier in this video, this is the recipe I'm most excited about because I grew up eating them, mm -hmm. but I've always been intimidated to make them. Correct. Are you a chicken and dumplings fan? Yes. Did you have them growing up? Yes. Have you ever made them? I've probably helped make them. Okay. But I don't, I haven't just made them myself. No. Like in our 15 years of marriage, we've never made chicken and dumplings. Right. I'm so excited. Now Auburn's over here cutting up some parsley. Now is parsley, is this mostly decoration? Is this to add flavor? What, what do we need parsley for? Um, parsley is mostly for color. I know that some people say it's for flavor. I don't particularly think it has much flavor unless that flavor is grass. Yeah. And so I would call this color rather than flavor. Got it. We are about to put the lid on, and this is what it looks like. Kind of a, what would you call it? Not a rolling boil. It's just a, it's just simmer. simmer. There you go. Now the lid's going on. For how long? The recipe says 10 minutes. And now I can take the lid off. You guys, that face, <laughs> like that face of just absolute frustration. You almost got hit. I did almost get hit. I will kick you out of the house. I the, will follow through on my threat. This scene right now with you being so mad and there being just a bunch of knives behind you <laughs> is just kind of perfect. Well, and you just threatened to accuse me of a crime. That is true. Keep me here. That's true. Sherry and I have been trying to figure out ways to not let Auburn leave Alaska. And one of the uh, one of the things that we came up with was the fact that if she gets accused of a crime in Alaska, uh, she can't leave the state until like a court date, but because of COVID courts are like super delayed for a long time. So we're like, well, that's easy. Boom. Buys a six to nine months. Just get her <laughs> a criminal record in Alaska. So she can't leave. At this point, I think we'll try anything. I've done really good 
at not taking the lid off or touching it. And this has been difficult, because I don't know if you guys can see this, but like there's like steam coming out of here. So I know that there's like something really cool happening inside, but I'm not allowed to take the lid off and it's kind of killing me. This is why I need help in the kitchen. Also, we got the rotisserie chicken over here and like Missy's just back over there, kind of like, how about you uh, put that rotisserie chicken on the floor, Papa, and let me, just let me have a couple minutes alone with it. Now Auburn gets to do what I've wanted to do for the last 20 minutes, which is remove the lid. <laughs> your turn let's, let's see oh my gosh i'm so oh oh my goodness you guys look at those dumplings auburn i'm so excited so now are we going to turn the heat off on these the heat oh. is off oh heat's off okay i'm going to make a gigantic mess in your kitchen apparently <laughs> what is that auburn's just knocking over the the lids we don't have a good place to store them, so they live there, which is terribly inconvenient, as you're learning. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, dinner's done. Okay. We're going to have dinner. Oh my gosh. You hungry? Yeah, I'm so hungry. This looks amazing. Auburn added the parsley to the top of it, so now we are ready to dish up dinner and give chicken and dumplings a try for the very first time here in the Leg House. Well, I'm done. Auburn's done. I'm Sherry's still working. Still, <laughs> still working, so we're going to start with Auburn. <laughs> Auburn. Yes. What did you think of this recipe? Um, it was super easy. Yeah? What would you yummy. what would you do different next time? Well, we did more chicken this time. Mm -hmm. And I think that I'm glad we did that. Mm -hmm. I would do more chicken every time. I agree. I think we did three or maybe even four cups of yeah, chicken. Yeah, probably. So we probably doubled the amount of chicken in the recipe. And that's fine. Um, I think it worked better that way. I would skip the parsley. Mm -hmm. I'm not a parsley fan and I don't like the way it tasted in this. I think it's if it's for color. I would do something else, like cilantro or basil or something that I like the flavor of better. Is this recipe you would do again? Yeah, for sure. All right, Sherry, you're still working over here, mm -hmm. but I want to ask you, mm -hmm. what were your thoughts on the very first chicken and dumplings dinner here in our home? I'm a fan. What'd you like about it? Um, so I was telling them, I think that when we did chicken and dumplings growing up, we did like really small dumplings, like kind of this big, which was fine, like more bite-sized. But I really liked the size of these. It was more like a biscuit. You could just sort of like cut off the size that you wanted and eat it with your chicken and your veggies. And I thought this was excellent. Anything you'd change? I agree with the parsley assessment. Um, yeah, I would put cilantro or basil or something pretty and green that actually adds flavor to it because I don't feel like the parsley really did. Also, for those of you guys wondering, this was behind Sherry, uh, oh. I got a beer advent calendar this year <laughs> from Costco and I could not be more excited about that. So my thoughts are actually about the same as theirs. Uh, I love this. This was exactly what I wanted. The dumpling reminded me of, as far as flavor goes, the dumplings that my mom made growing up and so it was absolutely perfect. I love, love, love this. I also would skip the parsley, but I don't think I would add, this is going to sound horrible, I don't think I would add anything green to it because it's it's just like, with comfort food, I don't care about fresh. Like, I don't care that it like tastes fresh. I want it to feel like hearty and thick and heavy and warm. And this was all of those things. So I didn't love the parsley and I would skip that. Um, other than that, I thought this was perfect. I agree with Auburn. I think doubling the amount of chicken the recipe calls for is a, is a good call. Is this something you would make on your own? 100%. I said earlier, the dumplings were the thing that always intimidated me, but watching how easy because you just basically mixed a few ingredients mm -hmm. and then just, yeah, like you didn't have to like roll them into perfect balls. Like it was just like put some on a spoon and put it in there and then leave it alone for 20 minutes. So and that, that I was say, that's the hardest part that I will struggle <laughs> with. Uh, I would totally make this. The using rotisserie chicken, using frozen bagged veggies meant that everything was pretty simple as far as like this recipe. So I would, I would for sure do this. Great fall recipe, great winter recipe, nice and hearty. The dumplings to me were the highlight of this whole meal. Like I, I could eat a bowl full of dumplings for sure. So friends, thank you guys for watching another uh, In the Kitchen with Adam and Auburn as Sherry gets to enjoy <laughs> the wonderful <laughs> food that we make. Uh, excited to share the next recipe with you guys on the next video next Sunday. We love you guys. Thanks for being a part of our community and we'll see you on the next Lug Life video. Also, as always, we're going to include the link to the recipe down below if you want to check this recipe out. If this is something you want to make yourself, uh, if you love chicken and dumplings, let me know in the comments. If there's something that we did that you might do a little bit differently, let us know your chicken and dumplings pro tips. But I thought this recipe was awesome.